Welcome to Focus on Seniors, a television show sponsored by Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Florida. The show is designed to make you aware of senior issues, needs, and resources available to help us age in place and with dignity. The show will help you as you develop your own aging and care plan. I'm Joe Steckler. Welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County a show designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is Falls and the Elderly. And with me in the studio is Chris Marriott, who is a physical therapist and rehabilitation director, and Nancy Deardorff, registered nurse and branch director, both from Gentiva Home Care of Melbourne. And I want you to pay particular attention to what we're talking about today, folks, because we are having an explosion of aging people. I am included in that group, and I know my balance is terrible. And I know there's some things that are causing my balance to be terrible. Yet I have talked to therapists, and I, I've talked to Chris Merritt, who's in the, and I've talked to other people from Gentiva all about my own problems. But having said that, let's just talk about it today, and let's see how much we can all learn about falls and the elderly, and welcome. Nancy? Thank you. Nice to be here, Joe. Oh, it's always nice to have you. And you too, Chris. Thanks, Welcome. Joe. Thank you for coming today. You bet. Uh, folks, sometimes I, I really enjoy doing some of our shows because I, I know the panelists, and I know what they do, and I know the, uh, the thought they put into what they talk about on these shows. And the advice that my panelists give people and the I, I think the explanations you all give are, are so appropriate. And I, I know that the falls in the elderly is just a, a topic that is so important today. And Chris, you're the director for what we call the Gentiva Safe Strides Program. Correct. And today I just want to talk about the elderly, what happens when our body starts to slow down, and you gave an explanation one time about, uh, was it motor skills and how the body functions and what happens when we, we start to come apart? Well, a lot of the, the problem with the, the falls is that the, the, the inner ear is the main contributor of balance and it's assisted by your vision and assisted by your, your muscles in your legs. Uh, and what happens is as we get older, the inner ear system needs to be kind of retuned periodically through activity. And many seniors stop doing activities such as rolling on the ground and moving around and doing the exact things that it needs to be done to the inner ear to keep it an active balancer of the body. So as soon as we stop, start having that fear built into it, they stop doing actions and that's the worst thing they could do. And it gets them even more susceptible to falls. So the inner ear kind of goes to sleep. Uh, we see kind of a dramatic increase in people in the 80s and 90s because the other systems that they used to rely on their vision, for example, is also failing them. So one of the things is something which they can't control their vision, but then the inner ear is one which they voluntarily kind of give up because of a fear. What? Nancy, do you want to add anything to what he said? You were... No, I, I, he's, he can speak best, best to it. He's been our uh, director of uh, rehab for... I don't know how many years now, and an expert on safe strides and does an, a, a great uh, explanation. But I guess the only thing I'll add is that falls are an epidemic in this country. Yeah. And I don't know if you know the statistics, Chris. I probably should have studied up a little bit better uh, before the show. But it, it just costs millions and millions of dollars a year in health care spending because of falls and the subsequent injuries that occur because of those falls that in large part are, are preventable. Some of the, some falls are not, but a, a, in, a, in large part, a lot of falls are preventable with the right treatment. And the thing is, and and Chris, I want you to. Uh, I'd like to address this problem. I uh, I was in a home. I was uh, months ago picking up a piece of art for an art auction we were going to have, and I was in the entrance of the home, and the, the artist commented on something in our living room. And as I turned to follow her into the living room, there was a step down of that far. But I was not expecting, it was just wide open space. 
And as I took that step down, I saw what was happening, but I was powerless to do anything because my reflexes were not fast enough where I could, well, it wasn't anything for me to catch on, but I just didn't have control of my fall like I, I, I have in the past when I was younger. Right, and you, and you nailed it on the head there because we, we all have this protective stepping reaction to either someone bumping into us at the mall or, or, or a sudden drop in the, in the elevation of a, of a step or a floor where years ago we would have been able to catch our balance and right ourselves very quickly, but you're using your balance senses to do that. You're using your vision to, to hit the horizontals and verticals and level yourself and your inner ear is picking up its position in space and doing a quick reflex of reaction to right yourself. And those things are all slowed as we get older. So we do notice that, and that's one of the things we work on in our program is, is getting so that people can recover from an almost fall, so mm -hmm. that they can reinstate these but reactions. From an older person's perspective of it, as myself, um, I could see what was happening. I could feel what was happening. But my, my muscles, the fact that my legs hurt all the time, prevented me from reacting. So what I did was I just started to tuck my right shoulder and I rolled mm -hmm. to, to prevent myself from trying to put my arms down and breaking a wrist or something like that. And uh, in, a, in a six month period, I fell three times. Twice I fell because I did not take my cane with me. And most of the time, my falls were caused because I have bifocal glasses and I stepped down off of a curb or some little place where I, as I, as I stepped, I could feel my, that imbalance, but I couldn't react quick enough to. And that's, and that's a big part of it, relying heavily on your vision, uh, depending on which part of your glasses you're looking at. If someone relies too much on that part of their balance system, they can be unsteady and be at a higher risk for falls. But that's not an inner ear problem. No, that's, I mean, well, your inner ear is not probably in tuned enough to compensate for difficulties using your, your eyes through your bifocals. It's kind of like that old adage, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And what Chris is describing is when we're young, we tend to use all of our systems of balance. And the older we get, some of those systems we start to ignore or because we don't do certain activities anymore, they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is a rehabable situation. And balance disorders doesn't necessarily have to go with aging. And I think to your point on the fall that you're talking about where the living room was at a different level, you said it was because of my muscles. I, I would tend to disagree and say it was more about what Chris was saying is maybe your muscles had something to do with it, but a lot more of it had to do with your systems of balance weren't uh, reacting as they would have if you were 25 or 30 or 40 years old. It hurt more for them to react like they did when I was 25 Right, but I'm, I'm not even sure if you, I'm not even sure, Chris, yeah. if he had that absence of pain, would he, he been able to write that uh, almost fall? You know, a lot of, I've almost fallen, and you catch yourself, you go, phew. Right. And to, to his point, um, the older we get and the more those systems of balance go to sleep, the more, the, the slower your reaction time in being able to use those system of balance to correct that fall and prevent it. And yeah. it's a subconscious reaction. You don't, like you said, you couldn't purposely correct yourself as you were going down. It, it almost has to be a subconscious reaction or a reflex. And that's what we teach people. We don't teach people to consciously step as they're falling. It's because the inner ear and the visual systems are a lot faster than our thought processes mm -hmm. can react. Okay. All right. Before I, I've got two pages of questions. All right. Before I get into all that. So I don't... Let's just go right to, sort of to the end of the, th the thing and, we'll, and then we'll work backwards. Sure. What is the Safe Strides program? Why is this important? And how does it help people? And how do we implement this thing? Or where do we do it? It's a vestibular rehab program. Vestibular meaning inner ear. So we're focusing on our therapy, not on just strengthening muscles and getting you stronger and reducing your pain. But we're looking at your inner ear as the primary culprit to the reason why people are at higher risk for falls. So we do a, a, a lot of testing to assess how people balance themselves using their vision and taking their vision away and then using the feelings in their feet, taking those senses away. And then we test them so that 
we isolate the inner ear and just see how well they can balance themselves. Is that when you cover your eyes? We cover our eyes and we get you to stand on a foam cushion and we remove all the senses you would normally try to use to balance yourself. Kind of isolates the inner ear and we see how well that is working. Uh, a lot of people cannot stand on, let's say for example, on a foam mattress with their eyes closed because they've, they're only relying on their inner ear then. We then can use that to rehabilitate people. The inner ear is one of the systems in the body which responds very well to therapy. It's not a bone or a muscle or a joint or, or the eyes which kind of degrade as we get older. The inner ear, we can make dramatic improvements in its ability to balance yourself. So the whole rehab program centers around the inner ear and getting that to enhance your balance. Now I can stand on that foam if it's about that thick. Right. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. You put this, they did the same thing to me. They put me on this piece of foam. They, they say, okay, now cover, or close your eyes. Right. I couldn't stand on that piece of foam with my eyes closed. I had no reference point or anything. So that's what the program does. It starts out and it, it teaches you to control your balance on that piece of foam with your eyes closed. It, it helps do things like that. Right. It essentially wakes up your inner ear. Your inner ear is a system of, of three canals in each ear. And each of those canals detect your position in space. So they kind of go to sleep over the years. But if we tend to close your eyes and put you on a foam and do a lot of therapy and force them to start working, they really start waking back up again. For, for instance, I, I just want to give an ex a quick example. If you, not that you would make a habit of this, but if you were laying upside down, or for instance, your, your wife for a while had that back inverter, which she would invert herself. Yeah. You're aware that you're upside down. Yeah, right. Right? If you yeah. put your head down and you're, you did a, a, a headstand, you're aware that you're upside down. That's a lot to do with your inner ear. Correct me if I'm Correct. wrong. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Your inner ear is what tells you that you're upside down. Okay, mine, in my case, would probably be my, the net they put in there shattering from, <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do, I couldn't do the inversion, use the inversion table because of my aorta repair. But nevertheless, let's take another example. If you're laying in bed, you know that you're laying down. Right. If you're sta even if your eyes are closed, if you're standing up, for, forget the balance for a minute, so if you're standing up, you're aware that you're standing this way. Right. If you were to go upside down, you would be aware that you're upside oh, down. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. That's what Chris means by, even with your eyes closed, understanding what your position is in space. That's exactly what it's... Your well, inner I ears... Can do that. I can do that. I can do that, but I still... But can you do it without falling? <laughs> well, many, many of the and scenes, not standing on a piece of foam, I can't. I can do it with here. I can do that. But if you... Um, if you stand on one foot, raise one foot, stand on the other, or if you stand on a piece, standing on a piece of foam. If we were not on TV right now, I would challenge you and say, let's get up, stand here, with our arms at our sides, put your feet together, and shut your eyes. And I guarantee you, I know I wobble all over the place. Your mm -hmm. balance is probably better because I think he's a better practitioner of his craft. We would probably wobble and need to steady ourselves. He's going to do it on TV anyway. I'm oh. going to do it anyway. Let's see. All right, well, okay. I'm going to put my feet together. Uh-huh. You direct wait, wait, wait. Chris. Cross your arms so you don't use those for balance. So cross your oh, arms no, and your I... chest. That's not bad. Not bad. But you probably yeah, feel yourself swaying a little bit. Well, my back is killing me. I got stenosis <laughs> yeah, well, and everything else. Well, you've got several issues. Most people would find themselves wobbling, and many elderly people would find themselves the need to open their eyes and steady themselves. And that's the sleeping vestibular system that Chris is talking about. A lot about. of people complain of cro chronic dizziness when they get up too fast or turn their head too fast when they're, someone's talking to them or they hear a strange noise and they move quickly and then they get a, a sense of dizziness or unsteadiness. Yeah. That's because the inner ear being shut down is so motion sensitive. It's not used to the quick movement. So it's not used to tying your shoelaces and coming back up and you feel dizzy. That's the inner ear telling you that is very, very sensitive to movement and needs to and, be reprogrammed. And as you get older, this becomes more sensitive. I, Absolutely. I, I think less sensitive. It, it becomes... It to sleep, right? It, it becomes more sensitive to motion, but less able to oh, balance you. Right, yeah. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. Jeez. 
Are you sorry you did the little exercise? No, 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 no. I'm just, it just, it just made me think. Um, but you know, I, I want to bring up a point. We talk about uh, vestibular issues. We talk about balance, and it's a huge problem. It's, it's more of a problem than people realize. But there's other causes of falls too, and I want to touch on that mm -hmm. today as well. Um, you know, we talked a little bit uh, on another show about. Uh, people falling, um, the fact that we at Gentiva, we, we have a patient that experiences a fall. We document or record the circumstances to, surrounding that fall to try to find out the root cause of why they okay. fell. Um, anybody could step off an uneven surface like you did, Joe. Yes. You know, was that a balance issue or was it just an unexpected, you know, you that, tripped? Uh, it was not balanced. Right. It was, uh, it was not unexpected. In both cases, I did not expect the Right. Step it was a yeah. change, uh, an unexpected recover. change in the level. But, you know, what I find really interesting is a lot of the falls that I record, um, I find it's amazing the amount of people that fall as a result of two things that I notice. One, trying to get to the phone that's ringing. Mm hmm because they can't stand the thought of it stop ringing and not knowing who it was. And I say if it's that important, they'll call back. And two, people tripping over their own assistive device, such as a cane or a walker, that was designed to help them not fall, mm -hmm. but because they're not using them correctly or they're treating it as an obstacle rather than an aid, they, they actually trip over that that can cause a fall. And the, the, the morbidity and mortality rate, if somebody falls and breaks a hip, actually just skyrockets and it's it's it, it, it contributes to health care cost it contributes to morbidity and mortality um, and even if somebody who's very elderly survives a fractured hip or a hip replacement um, the quality of life is likely not going to be necessarily depending on the general health of that patient where it was so the key is prevention um, and there's so many things I think we do wrong we go into a lot of homes and we see um, throw rugs and we see obstacle courses, little yeah. crowded houses. And you'd be surprised at how many patients, when our physical therapists go in and say, all right, this is, we're not going to make them do anything. We're just recommending. This is what we recommend to rearrange your home to make it safer. And I think you'll agree with me how many people you'd be surprised that will not let you touch their home and say, mm -mm, that's, I want that right where it is, even yeah. if it's detrimental, right, Chris? Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the things that Nancy brought up a great point with we take a look at what caused the falls, and people say, well, I just tripped and I fell. It was an accident. Well, let's see why they tripped. And it's usually because they had a short shuffling gait because they're afraid to take appropriate steps with and their feet, feet clearing up. the floor. So they say, well, I was out at Applebee's and I tripped over the cement block. Well, there's a reason why you tripped over it because you were afraid to, to stand on one it. leg long enough and clear it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these accidental falls are truly as a result of the fear of falling and probably not a good balance system to start with. We have oriental rugs in the home and I so often, probably on a daily basis, catch my foot on one of the small oriental throw rugs and I have to go back and smooth it out. I am simply not picking my feet up. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. So and not only we, are you not picking your feet up, you're tripping, and then you're going back and smoothing the rug out, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you have to bend over to do that. No, so you're, my you, foot. <laughs> okay. All right. Because you, you, you could potentially put right. yourself at a risk of another fall just by straightening out the rug. So. Yeah, and then with and all our fringes, and I am, what you're going to say, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll get down, <laughs> and I want to, you know, I, I kick the fringes, and I, what I want to do is I'll get over, and I'll get on the rug, and I'll bend over. But it looks nice, right? Yeah, and I'll pick the rug up and flip it back so that the fringes. Right. Are, and several times I have come close to falling because. Well, we're, we're, we're at a really truly pending epidemic in, in many things with the whole senior baby boomer bubble passing into the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more people living older. I mean, our healthcare system is wonderful, so our overall our age is, is getting up there. We're seeing a lot more 90 and 100 year olds. Mm -hmm. But we're also seeing them, unfortunately, forced to live at home because they can't afford the proper, maybe assisted living level of care. So we're having a lot older population trying to live at home as best they can, and we're seeing an explosion of the people who are suffering falls. Okay, okay. given that situation, what are some of the things like weight control, strength increase, strength, uh, strengthening our muscles, what are some of the things that a therapist in our skilled home health services teach people in their homes to do this? 
or the value of going to a gym, even though you're in your 70s and 80s. There's some uh, great, amazing Tai Chi programs out there that are easy on the joints. They're not an aggressive aerobic activity, but they really work on your balance system. So there's, there's more and more programs tailored to the senior population out there uh, for their ability, but it'll also enhance their balance. So going to a gym, going to a walking program, specifically when they're walking and turning their heads, something that will enhance their vestibular system. Uh, it's gonna be a big part going forward for seniors to get them active into these programs uh, so that they can prevent falls. Well, I, I, I think that at times, um, I don't think we place enough emphasis on impact type exercises for people as they get older, 60s, 70s, and 80s. In other words, I think too many of us, as we get older, give up on the types of exercises that tend to build muscle. Uh, muscle mass, as you get older, decreases rapidly. But you're not going to, unless you take steroids and do all kind of stuff, you're not going to keep that muscle mass like it was when you're 20, 30, early 40s. But you can do something by using weights, things like that, to help maintain your strength. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think that that's another thing that uh, it's important for, for seniors as you get older to pr participate in these, these exercise programs that we have at so many of our seniors centers. And you can, there's nothing wrong with going to a gym yourself. No, not at I all. I enjoy that. I think it's important, too, to, uh, for, particularly for the older person, anybody really, to talk to their doctor, make sure you're cleared for exercise physically, and then I think it's really important to talk to either a physical therapist or an exercise specialist to find out what exercise, exercises are right for you based on what your goals are. Would you agree with that, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who haven't been used to exercising and doing a lot of strengthening uh, throughout their ages, but... If they put them through a vestibular program, a lot of that is inner ear rehab. It's not an aggressive strengthening program, but it's going to achieve excellent balance as the long-term result of it. Right. I don't think I don't think that many. I think that many seniors fail to understand that the muscles holding our bones together have to be maintained. And the reason I say that is because and I'm not sure if you were on the show with you, but. The therapist had me on, a, on my side, and my left leg was extended, and I was doing little circles like this. Well, big circles. And on the second time coming around, I felt, my hip felt like it was dropping. And the therapist watched me, and she said, don't do that. I said, what's happening? She said, as much as you work out, ride a bicycle, and do these uh, leg exercises, You've been doing muscles to strengthen your legs from the front and the back, but you haven't done anything to, to straighten those muscles on the side. And what was happening, my hip was dropping. She says, don't do that. Do these little small circles that, that will tend to build that maxis gluteus muscle, whatever it is on the <laughs> outside of the hip. I had to set it right. That's right. Maxis gluteus. <laughs> Well, there's gluteus maximus, but... Gluteus it, maximus, okay. I'm, I don't know, the oh. muscle's as good as Chris does. That's right. Whatever your hip, yeah. It's that great big mass of muscles on your hip that, right. uh, yeah. Was it gluteus maximus or maximus that's gluteus? That's gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. Yeah, I, it sounds like better than maximus gluteus. That's, like <laughs> what, that's what it like would have been in <laughs> the old Roman meant. days. You have to have fun doing these things. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you some of the best, best activities for strengthening and balance is, is pool therapy. If I can get... Everyone who had a, a big community pool, an ALF, or their own, their own home into a specific pool program, it's excellent form. It, it takes a lot of the weight off their joints. They don't have to have a fear of falling because if they fall, well, hopefully they don't know how to swim. Then right. they, they just fall into the water and they're fine. Uh, so a pool therapy combines a, a best of so many different types of therapy. Yeah, and keeping that range of motion with your joints. Um, I mentioned this. I think on another show, so for viewers who are seeing this again, but I have a friend that's really into fitness. Um, he works out uh, a lot, but he also stretches more than anybody I know. And I think I said this on the show the other day. He said to me one time he was stretching. Um, we were just sitting around watching TV, a, a bunch of us, and stretching. He goes, you know what? I think stretching is almost more important than exercising. And, you know, I don't know if it's more important, but it's equal uh, I, I at least think, um, because uh, 
First of all, we don't pay enough attention to exercise in this country. Second of all, for those who do exercise, I think there's a tendency to forget about stretching and range of motion, which is so important. And that's another thing pool therapy can do Mm -hmm. is help you keep that range of motion for your joints. I mean, you really don't know how good you got it until it's gone. You know, you don't know how important this motion is or any motion that we do is until you can't do it anymore. You're exactly right, Nancy. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I have, I think when I was, I started working out seriously when I was 18. And I've, I've kept it up my whole life. In fact, when I was a submarine officer on, on a submarine at sea, I had uh, dumbbells with me on the submarine. So that, that takes a lot of, a lot no, of no, We're not talking to you sailors. Don't mean, you don't mean the sailors. <laughs> <laughs> we were jumping on that one there, Joe. You were the dumbbells. Okay. I, there was a lot. Of, we've got off and we, we didn't talk about medication. We didn't talk about... Uh, uh, just so many. We'll come s- back. Say we'll, we'll we'll have to do another part of our visual training aids on our new series of TV shows. We'll do that about. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go back to follows now because there are medicines, medications are extremely important for seniors and and they do. We'll touch on that. Just we got about two minutes. Uh, medications. Yeah, talk about medication. That's a, the importance of that's medic- a week long series. I can't. I know. I, well, the we got two minutes. Uh, I guess what I can say about seniors is, A, I think too many people are on too many medications. I agree. Um, some medications are absolutely necessary. I don't want to sound anti-medication, but it's very important for a patient to make their primary care physician aware of everything they're putting in their mouth. Minimize it. Don't take what you don't have to take. Get every prescription filled by one pharmacist. A pharmacist is one of the least used healthcare professionals. They're free. They come with your prescription and can give you a plethora, a, a plethora of advice beyond even that of a physician or a nurse. So that's the main thing I would say. Um, and bring a list of your medications every time you go to visit your primary care physician with you, every time. Not only your prescription medications, but your over-the-counters. Anything you might take for a headache or upset stomach, because many of these medications have interactions that people don't think about or realize. I did that recently. I sat down with my, my primary care doctor, and I said, I had a basket I took a stuff in. And I said, what do you think I can eliminate? And he looked at me and he says, well, instead of taking this three times a day, let's just take it once a day. Right, even a reduction. Yeah. I think what's, what's coming out of our show today is that there are many things that affect our balance. Some we can control, some we can't. Mm-hmm. But uh, we can sure do a better job of trying to do better at, at all of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, By the way, antihypertensive, since you mentioned medications, antihypertensive have a lot to do uh, sometimes with people falling because it lowers the blood pressure and sometimes people get up too quickly and they don't realize and yeah, they fall. Definitely. So that's, that's a show. whole other show. I got a signal. Yeah. We got to cut it off. Okay. Thank you both for being thank here you. today. And thank you, viewer, for watching, especially this episode of Focus on Seniors. And if you have questions or comments about our show, please call radio station WMEL AM 1300 at 321-631-1300. And for more information on senior care and resources, visit our website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned something from Chris and Nancy. Thank you very much.